Hi, Cheryl Kirchbaum here with My Body, My Worship. And we are talking about how to have peace in the pandemic. So how to have peace in your heart despite all the chaos going on all around you. Or maybe despite all of the boredom that you're experiencing while at home, not able to see people in person. All right, so I have to tell you about a post that a friend of mine put out on Sunday about, uh, it's a really great lesson that she did with her kids. She and her husband did with with their kids. And I'm gonna put the uh, post in the comments below so that you can take a look. So this is my friend, Nicole Clark. She's another author and uh, she and her husband, oh, I copied something else. So I gotta go get it again. Uh, she and her husband have several kids, and they talked about, you know, what we are going through right now, this very different way of living that we have going on right now because we don't have a choice, right? This is uh, circumstances beyond our control. And that's one of the main things that we need to remember is that we're not in control here, Right? And we often think that we are, and we try really hard to be in control, but this is a situation where we are learning that we are not in control of our lives, right? We aren't. There are things we can put in place, we have great plans, but God is the one who decides our steps. And we are in a situation that is new and different to us. And... Uh, it's very new to our generation. You know, I'm 50 years old. I've never experienced anything like this before. Uh, you know, I was born after everybody was going off to Vietnam. Uh, you know, my my uncle, uh, that my parents' generation experienced things that that I have never experienced. So for so many of us, this is so new to us. We have never been squeezed like this before. So my friend Nicole and her husband uh, reminded their children that we're kind of like lemons who are being squeezed. And it's interesting to see what's coming out of us right now. So I found the link. Here's the link so you can go take a look at her post and how she talked about it with her kids. But my question to you is, what's coming out of you right now? What have you noticed about yourself during this uh, pandemic, this social distancing, this stay at home as much as possible? For many of you, you're not allowed to go to work. You're working from home. You're trying to figure out how to have meetings online from home. Uh, when everybody else is trying to be on online at the same time. Uh, you're learning how to do school at home. Never had to do that before. You are having all sorts of experiences that are new and different. So I'm wondering, what's coming out of you? Are you more afraid than you were, say, a month ago? Are you more angry than you were, say, a month ago? What is different? What is coming out of you as you're being squeezed through this life test? Do you want it to be joy instead of whatever it is you're feeling? Do you want it to be peace? What do you want to have come out of you? So there are two questions for you. What's actually coming out of you and what do you want to have coming out of you? I realized for me a couple years ago that despite all of my healing that I've received uh, after going through um, all sorts of realizations with my abortion, uh, that I was completely healed from that, but I wasn't completely healed. So I had healing in my heart from the abortion, but not from everything else. And it took me a while to figure it out, but I figured it out because I asked God. 
I was in actually a post-abortion healing class and I was trying to figure out why I was there because I was healed from the abortion. I was sure of it. And it's true. I was. I walked into that class healed from my abortion. But God had me there for a reason. And so I had to seek him and find out why. Why was I there? And he revealed it to me. He made it clear, Cheryl, yeah, you're, you're, you're healed from the abortion, but you're not healed from everything that led you to get pregnant in the first place. And I realized he was right. And I said, okay, there are all sorts of stories that I tell about my life, about how I was brought up, about my family, about my family history. And they're, they're told in bitterness. Now, the book of Hebrews says, don't let the root of bitterness, don't let bitterness take root or root, depending on what part of the country you're from. And, and he's right. The, the Hebrews is right about that because once it takes root, it's really hard to get it out. It's not an easy weed to pull out. But I found how to do it. And I want to share that secret with you. Because what I realized is that I have been bitter for most of my life, if not all of my life. And I would tell those stories over and over again. And they were like a, like a, you know, like I was proud of my pain. I was proud of my bitterness. And this is the way I was because of these things that happen. And you don't understand because this is the way my family is like. And I was, I was wearing it kind of like a badge. But this isn't a badge that I really wanted to have. Bitterness is not really a badge that we want, right? <clears throat> what I figured out is that I wanted joy. That's what I was missing. And I wanted it so badly, I was willing to give up my bitterness to get it. Now, what you need to do is figure out what it is that's coming out of you. Is it bitterness? Is it anger? Is it fear? What is it that's coming out of you right now while you're being squeezed during this life test? Are you ready and ready to get rid of it? And then, if you are, what do you want to replace it with? Want peace? Let's go through those uh, fruit of the spirit that we talked about yesterday. Because I'm guessing there's something in there that you really want, that you wish you had, but don't have. So let's go through those. So uh, fruit of the spirit is love. And actually in that, ancient, in that Greek, they didn't have punctuation. So maybe there was a colon after the word love because it says fruit is love. And Paul was highly educated, highly educated. He knows how to write an essay like none of us. I mean, you just go look and read the book of Romans. It is a phenomenal essay. And he dictated that to somebody else. So he didn't even handwrite that, all right? Uh, so Paul, highly educated, said, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So maybe if we were to punctuate that today, we would say the fruit of the Spirit is love, colon, as in as shown by joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So what in that list are you missing and that you want? Is there one that you want more than others? For me, it was joy. I had figured out the peace part because for me, when I worship the Prince of Peace, I feel at peace. So I had gotten that already, but maybe that's what you need. I needed joy. That's what I needed more than anything. And so what I did to get rid of my bitterness was I forgave. 
So I sat down with my journal because I'm a writer and I like to journal. All right, you don't have to journal. I'm just telling you what I did. You figure out what works for you. So I sat down with my journal and I thought about what stories I have always told. And then I, so I wrote them out because that's how I process my thoughts. And then I, I said, okay, so who is it that I blame for that story? And I figured out who it was and I wrote that person's name down. And some of those people aren't alive anymore. I wrote the person's name down and then I said, Lord, I forgive whomever it was. Lord, please forgive me and take away that bitterness that I had towards that person and that story and replace it with joy. And then I went on to the next story and I kept going and going. So let me tell you where I got this from. I got this from Matthew. Uh, I can never remember if it's five or six. Six, Matthew chapter six. Now this is also the Lord's Prayer. Yesterday we talked about the Lord's Prayer as it's recorded in the book of Luke. Today we're going to go through the Lord's Prayer as it is listed in the book of Matthew. So it's Matthew chapter 6, uh, and the prayer starts at verse 9. And remember, we, taught, we call this the Lord's Prayer because the Lord taught it to us, but he didn't say this. He, cre he taught a prayer type or prayer pattern that we disciples should follow or could follow. All right, so he starts off, and he says, pray in this way. Now, many of us learned, memorized uh, the Lord's Prayer growing up, and there's nothing wrong with that. Keep doing that. But I would like you to stop and think about what each part says. And I didn't do that until I was an adult, and maybe you haven't done it yet. But let's take a look. All right, he says, our Father who is in heaven... Hallowed be your name. As in, he showed worship to God. Recognized God for who he is. And how powerful and holy his name is. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. There's a pretty powerful prayer. To have what... It, the way things are in heaven to be here on earth, there's peace in heaven. Isn't that awesome that we could have peace here on earth and that we can ask the Lord for it? Give us our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Huh. So give us our daily bread Feed us, Lord. Give us what we need. And the question here then, is, is that a spiritual need or a physical need? I'll let you figure that out. You can take that to the Lord. But verse 12, forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. As in, Lord, forgive us as we have forgiven others. Hmm. We're going to come back to that. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And then in brackets, because somewhere along the line, somebody seems that somebody added it. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. But then, verse 14, Jesus says, For if you forgive others for their transgressions, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. So we have verse 12 where it says, and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And then in 14, for if you forgive others for their transgressions, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. 
So we need to remember that not only should we go to God and say, Lord, I haven't always done things your way, and I'm sorry, please forgive me. We also need to go to our Lord and say, Lord, I'm angry with fill in the blank, your husband, your wife, your boss, your coworker, your kids, your brother, your sister. Lord, I'm angry with them, but I'm going to choose not to be bitter and I'm gonna to choose to forgive them. Lord, I forgive them. Please forgive me as well for harboring bitterness and anger towards them. And then God is sure to forgive you. He wants you to let go. He wants you to be in relationship with other people. And when you forgive, you're better able to do that. You'll be released in ways that you can't even realize right now. So I was talking to a friend of mine today, a new friend, and we were getting to know each other, and we were talking about forgiveness because she's really feeling like the Lord is uh, having her speak on forgiveness. And she's an abortion survivor. She had to forgive her birth mother for trying to have an abortion. I will go find uh, her testimony for you so that you can uh, listen to it. It's so wonderful. Her name is Jennifer Milborn. And uh, so please excuse me while I'm looking for that while talking to you. She, um, so she's teaching on forgiveness and talking to people about forgiveness. And it's so important. It is so important for us to forgive because we are released. And it's powerful, and it's wonderful. So here we go. I found it. It's a podcast, so I'll post it right here for you. So go listen to Jennifer's story. But this forgiveness, it's really, really good for you. For you as an individual, when I was talking to her, I was telling her my own story of going on a forgiveness binge. That's what I called it today, and I just loved it. So now I'm kind of stuck on it. Forgiveness binge. I took a couple hours with my journal and just went through every single story that I have ever told that I could think of that I, where I harbored bitterness, where I was angry with somebody. And I identified who I was upset with, and then I forgave that person. And then I said, Lord, please replace that space that I had full of bitterness and replace it with joy, because joy is the thing that I wanted. And I just kept going. And I, could, and I got to a point where I couldn't think of anything more, and so I said, Lord, what else? Who else do I need to forgive? What other stories do it, have I told people about my life and the way things are in my family? And he gave me more. And so I kept on going. And this took me, I don't know, at least two hours of me going through things, and I was working really fast because I was just bound and determined to be free from all of this. And even when I got done, I thought, I think I'm done. Lord, I think I'm done. But you know my heart. You know who I'm angry at. So please, if any anybody else, if there's anybody else that I need to forgive, please tell me. And he didn't tell me anything then. And I was going to bed, and I prayed, and one more time I said, Lord, you can teach me in the night. So tell me, who do I have left to forgive? Who am I still angry with? And I went to bed, and I slept well until 5 o'clock in the morning. And I woke up, and I was irritated. I was having a bad dream. I was really angry with my husband. And we were, I don't know what we were fighting about or what it was that I was angry about, but I was really angry. And then I wake up. So I wake up. I'm in a bad mood. I realize it's 5 o'clock in the morning and I don't want to be up. But I felt like God was telling me that I needed to go pray 
and forgive my husband. And I said, okay, fine. And I got up and I walked over to this very chair that you're that I'm sitting in right now. And I felt very clearly that I was not to sit in the chair because if I sat in the chair, I was gonna fall asleep. And so I got down on my knees and I forgave my husband. And it just took me a minute, but I forgave him for everything that I was angry about, everything that was going on in that dream. And then I was kind of like, okay, can I go back to sleep now? And if, I felt like God released me to go back to bed, so I did. And it was summer, and I got three more glorious hours of sleep because I didn't have to get up and go anywhere that day. And when I woke up, I woke up refreshed, and I remembered that I had a dream. I remembered it was a dream about being angry with my husband, but I couldn't remember why I was angry at him. And I still can't tell you today. And it was gone. It was completely gone. And I was like, huh, that's pretty cool. I like that. And then I started noticing over the next several days that I really was truly joyful. And my kids, they started noticing because I haven't had much of a sense of humor. So my teenager, he would bring me cartoons. He loves cartoons. Big Dilbert fan, big Garfield fan. He loves cartoons. And he, he's for years been bringing me cartoons for, to share them with me and expecting me to laugh. And I'm like, yeah, whatever. I actually laugh at cartoons now. He brings me jokes. He's been bringing me jokes for years. And I'm like, uh, yeah, okay. Now I actually laugh at them and even come up with some on my own. It really has been wonderful to be, have joy. And so this is my trick for you. Figure out what it is that's been coming out of you during this life test. And if you don't like it, tell God you want to get rid of it and ask him how. And go and forgive people. And you will be released. You will feel so much better. And don't forget to ask for God to replace that bitterness or anger or fear, whatever it was, with something that you want. One of the fruit, one part of what's listed in the fruit of the Spirit of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And once again, that's from Galatians 5, 22 and 23. All right. Blessings to you. Have a good night.